Hello, my name's Kevin Large and I'd like to welcome you to the 12th in our series of IoT Security Raspberry Pi emulation videos. In this 12th foundational video we're going to be looking at virtual Ethernet cards. The topology that we're going to use for this particular lab should be quite familiar by now. What we have is we have a Kali Linux virtual machine which is connecting via the VirtualBox host only network adapter into our Windows bridge and we have our emulated Raspberry Pis running in Kumu which connect through Windows tap adapters VME1, VME2 and VME3 also into the network bridge. This means that when we configure the DHCP server on the Kali Linux VM the Kumu Raspberry Pis will actually get their IP addresses and subnet masks from that DHCP server running on the Kali Linux virtual machine. However, we do need to make sure that we switch off the DHCP server that runs in Oracle VirtualBox. So just a quick reminder, in Oracle VirtualBox we actually have an inbuilt DHCP server which runs on the host only network. Um, if you go to File go to host network manager you can actually see in here if I just maximize that for a second uh, we've got uh, DHCP server enable I've not ticked that if I come over to the tab over here you'll see that it's not ticked if I was to tick that it would switch on the Oracle VirtualBox DHCP server which uses this network range and then we'd have two DHCP servers competing with each other the Oracle VirtualBox DHCP server and also DHCP server that we're going to be running on Kali Linux. So you need to make absolutely certain that the Oracle VirtualBox DHCP server is not enabled. Okay, we'll start up a Kali Linux machine which is connected to our host only adapter. The Kali Linux machine will now start to boot up. We can see the Grub bootloader the grand unified bootloader and then we'll be able to see the uh, various services starting to run and the modules starting to load it takes just a few seconds so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause that for a moment okay Kali Linux is now booted up I'll just log in with the user root and the password of Tor which of course is root backwards we'll get the graphical user interface popping up on the screen and then our next job will be, uh, I'll probably just quickly check the IP address on the interface and uh, then we'll initiate the DHCP server service. Okay, so uh, let's have a little look. There's our terminal, which is our shell window to the operating system. So if I click on the terminal window what we'll do is we'll check the IP address. That's open twice there. There we go. Very slight delay. We'll check the IP address with an IPA. We'll use the more modern commands and we can see that we've got an IP address of 2030113.1 with a slash 24 mask. Uh, we can also, while we're here in fact, we can check using SS minus T U L N so that's uh, sockets, listening sockets, uh, TCP, UDP, listening sockets, numerical and we can see that basically there are no listening sockets running on this Kali Linux machine TCP or UDP uh, so what we'll do is we'll now check the status of our DHCP server with service ISC DHCP server status and we can see that it's not running at the moment it's inactive we'll hit the up arrow and we'll just change status to start so service ISC DHCP server start give it a few seconds and we'll double check that status again now and we can see that it's active and it's running uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to clear the screen with the control L and then I'm just going to hit the up arrow a few times to bring back the SS command so TCP UDP listening numerical 
and you will now notice that on 0000, which of course is network speak for all IP addresses, uh, all interfaces in this case as well, if we had multiple interface, uh, network interface cards, we're listening on UDP port 67 and UDP port 67 is the DHCP server port. Okay, if I remove the N we'll see that we've actually got boot P S and the S on the end there is basically for server. Okay, so boot P uh, is effectively an old name for the predecessor really of DHCP. Um, so this is ready now to hand out IP addresses, subnet masks and so on. What we can now do is we can go down into the file system and start up node 3. I'll run the batch file. Simply double click on the batch file in order to run it. We can see the command that was actually run there. It's a very, very long command. Uh, we can see numerous pieces of information in there. 256 megabytes of memory. We can see where the root file system is stored. We can see the image, the operating system image, chestnut.image. We can see the network card, which is a tap adapter. Um, its interface name is VME3. We can see the MAC address that we've put on that tap adapter. So if you've been following along with these foundational videos, uh, this will make complete sense to you because these foundational videos started right at the beginning with obtaining the software, installing the software, installing Kali Linux, setting up virtual networking, um, creating a Kumu virtual machine template, creating multiple Kumu virtual machines, um, setting up uh, services, uh, setting up IP tables, firewall, and it literally let, led you through step by step. And now we're getting to the tail end now of the uh, foundational videos. And what we're going to do in this particular video is we're going to look at virtual Ethernet cards. Why would you want a virtual Ethernet card? Well, on a real Raspberry Pi, of course, you have a wired Ethernet card, ETH0, and you also have a wireless Ethernet card, WLAN0. On the emulated Raspberry Pis, there is no wireless software, so we can't have a wireless network card, WLAN0. Um, some of the labs, they don't actually use the actual wireless capability of that card. They just need a, another interface to put an IP address on. Okay, we can't create a wireless network card because the emulated Raspberry Pis obviously don't have wireless hardware on them. But what we can do is we can create a virtual Ethernet card, which is just a network interface that we can put an IP address on. And that's what we're going to do in this particular video. OK, we can see that we've got an IP address of 203.0.113.28. Uh, that will have come across from the Kali Linux uh, VM's DHCP server. Uh, let's have a little look. Um, we can actually have a look at that. If we look in the file uh, DHCP D, DH Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol Daemon, or server in other words, leases, which is in var lib DHCP, I'm just going to open it with nano, the text editor. Uh, what we can do is we can actually see that we've got numerous leases going out. Dot .26 has gone to a machine with a hardware address of 11. That was node 1, probably fired up some time ago. Dot .27, dot .25, and if we work our way down, there we go. 203.0.113.28 has been given out to Kumu RPI3. OK, so that's us. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to SSH into Kumu RPI3. OK, so there's my IP address, dot .28, and I'm going to do SSH pi at 203.0.113.28, tapping the password of Raspberry. And that should allow us to get into Kumu RPI3. And there we go. Excellent. As the Pi user, who am I? You are the Pi user. If I do a W, 
you can see where I've come in from. I've come in from the IP address 203.0.113.1, which of course is the Kali Linux machine. Okay, let's uh, open another tab on the Kali Linux machine. I'm going to hit Control Shift T to open another tab, and I'll do an IPA. And you can see that, yes, indeed, the Kali Linux machine is 203.0.113.1. So we've gone into the Raspberry Pi from the Kali Linux machine, precisely what we expected to do. Excellent. Now, before we actually create these virtual Ethernet cards, I'm just going to show you a few things. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a sudo su to become the root user. Uh, let's see. Um, I'll clear the screen again with the control L. Um, if I do the if config command, which is the old command for looking at your interface configuration, it's part of the net tools package. You can see that I've got Ethernet 0 and the loopback. If I do the IPA command, which is part of the IP root 2 toolkit, which is the newer one, uh, we've got basically the same information there. Okay. Um, however, we could do an awful lot more things with the IPA command. There are a lot of things you can do with the IP config command, but there's even more you can do with the IPA command. I mean, I could do an IPA command show Ethernet 0 just to look at Ethernet 0. And you can do something similar with IF config. Um, I can do IP-4 a show Ethernet 0 just to show IP version 4 information. So compare IPA show Ethernet 0 with IP-4 a show Ethernet 0. You'll notice that this line here, which is basically layer 2, the data link layer, so we've got our MAC address information, is missing. Okay. Um, when we do ifconfig, ifconfig by default will only show interfaces that are up. It won't show all your interfaces, only the ones that are actually up. If you wish to see all of your interfaces, you actually have to do ifconfig space hyphen a. Now in this case, I don't have any other interfaces that are down, so it looks the same. But with the IPA command, that will show you all of your interfaces, regardless of whether they're up or down. Okay. Um, so without further ado, what we're going to do now is we're going to create some virtual Ethernet interfaces. And the key here is to realize that when you create virtual Ethernet interfaces, they're created in pairs you cannot create a single virtual Ethernet interface. They have to be created in pairs. Okay, so a bit like a magnet really has a north and a south pole. You can't just have a north pole, a magnetic monopole for all those physics people out there. Um, it's the same with virtual Ethernet interfaces. Okay, so what is the command to create a virtual Ethernet interface? Here's the command. IP link add veeth0 now that's just a name you could call it anything you like within reason okay but it makes sense to call it veeth0 type veeth that is not a name you have to specify the actual type and this is a veeth or virtual ethernet type peer name followed by the peer name and like i say they're created in pairs so now we have a pair of virtual ethernet interfaces veeth0 and veeth1 these are simply names, vth0 and vth1, but the type of course has to be set to vth. So we'll hit enter, and then what we'll do is we'll do an ifconfig, okay. and on Raspbian, on this particular version of Raspbian, these interfaces are up by default, so they show automatically when you do an ifconfig, you can see that they're actually up here. And you can see it's created a pair of interfaces, v0 and v1. Okay. The control L to clear the screen. I'll now do an IPA. And we get very similar information come through. You can see that they're actually related to each other in the output of IPA. So we've got v1 at v0 and we've got v0 at v1. 
and you can see that they've actually because they're up they've even attempted to go off and get IP addresses which they can't do at the moment so we've got a, a PIPA automatic private IP addressing 169254 addresses okay this is good um, however let's say you didn't want to make use of both virtual Ethernet addresses let's say that uh, you only wanted one well you can't create a single VETH interface we know that but what you can do is you can create a pair and then bring one down so that's what we'll do next I'm going to bring down v0 leave v1 up so to do that I'm going to use IP link set v0 down Okay, doesn't look like much has happened there what I'll do is I'll just run the IPA command again now the output of IPA will show you all of the interfaces whether they're up or down so we can still see the other interface however we can see that this one v1 is up whilst v0 is not up v0 is actually down okay um, if we do an IF config That looks a little bit cleaner in some respects because ifconfig by default doesn't show interfaces which are down. So now vf0 disappears off the list. When you're saying that, you can do this. You can actually say IP address um, show up. And now this behaves a bit like ifconfig because now IPA only shows interfaces which are up. And you can combine these things together, so you could actually turn around and say IP A IP minus four A to only show the IPv4 information for interfaces that are up. There we go. So what have we done? We've created our own virtual Ethernet interface. And that virtual Ethernet interface is up now the eagle-eyed people there all think hello hello what's going on here we've only got loop back and Ethernet 0 here it's disappeared the reason it's disappeared is because we used the minus 4 there there is no IPv4 address on a virtual Ethernet 1 interface so it's not showing up when we add the minus 4 so let's just do that again just to make sure you see what the difference is there. IP address show up. This will show all the interfaces that are up. If we now do a minus 4, because there is no IPv4 address on v one it disappears off the list. Okay, so that's the next thing to fix. We will now put an IPv4 address on v one So looking at the command, this is IP address add. Um, IP address, you can put the whole word in if you want, IP address, but you can actually shorten it down to A. Um, so IP address add 192.168.5.1 with a slash 24 mask to device Ethernet 1. And all we need to do now is click enter, and that should be there. So now when we run the command, IP address show up we can see v1 has that IP address on it and when we run the command IP-4 show it will now show up because it does actually have an IPv4 address on okay so that's good excellent but what I want to do now is I just want to tie a lot of these things together what we're going to do now is we're going to create a couple of bash scripts we're going to take this a little bit further and we're going to make a bash script which automatically adds the virtual Ethernet addresses and another one which automatically removes them but before we do that we'll just remove them just to tidy things up so how would you remove the virtual Ethernet interfaces let's just go back through a history using the up arrow there we go I tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to clear the screen a little bit because it's just going to be easier to see what's happening so 
going to use the up arrow to go back through uh, history and you can see I've got IP link add v0 type v peer name v1 if I hit control a to go to the start of the line and I can hit escape f and that will move forward one word escape f I know that's interesting it won't do it in a SSH session huh remarkable okay we'll do it directly from the console but not in an SSH session so if we go IP link just use the arrows instead remove the add and put Dell on for delete control E will go to the end of the line so that's good so control A start of the line control E the end of the line however the escape B and the escape F which move backwards and forwards one one word um, don't appear to work on the SSH session so that's interesting boom okay now if we do an IF config it's gone if we do an IPA it's gone so we're good to go so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a couple of bash scripts and I've already created these to save time but I'll explain how they work I'm going to do a ls and you can see that I've got a folder called scripts I'm going to cd into my scripts folder and I'll just show you what's in there with an ls minus l you see I've got a bash script called veeth underscore down Dot sh and another one called veeth underscore up dot sh. Um, I'll just very very quickly explain how I created those bash scripts. You can create them using any text editor. So what I did was I used nano. So if I do a nano of veeth underscore up dot sh, you'll see the script. Uh, Bash scripts have to start with this, which is they call a shebang. So that's uh, hash forward slash bin bash. This specifies the shell it's going to run in. Um, I borrowed these from the Linux, from the Cisco Wi-Fi script. Uh, this is just a way of setting um, the uh, variables up for colors, basically. And then what I've done is I've just used an echo. Echo will print something to the screen. The hyphen E allows us to include the variables in here. So dollar red means that this text in the quotation marks will be in red. Um, the forward slash N means create a new line. So we'll have a space underneath this line before virtual interfaces are added. And then dollar end color will basically just end the color. Uh, and the great thing with the bash script is you can just simply put in Linux commands. So you can see what I've done. It's quite straightforward, really, if you have a look at it. All I've done is I've put IP-4A show up. So it's going to show the IPv4 addresses on any interfaces that are up. IP link add v0, type v eth, peer, network name v1. And then what I've done is I've told it to sleep for five seconds. This creates a five second pause. Clear the screen. And then what it's going to do is it's going to bring down v0. And then it's going to add the IP address 192.168.5.1 to device v1. Once it's done that, it's going to print the after virtual inter Ethernet interfaces are added with a new line underneath in green and then it will run the command to show the virtual Ethernet interfaces wait five seconds and clear the screen okay now this first wait of five seconds was incredibly important because the first time I created this script it wasn't bringing down v0 and I discovered that was because it was running this command so fast after it created the virtual Ethernet interfaces that it wasn't working. So simply putting a little pause in here actually allowed this line IP link set v0 down to work. Okay, 
once you've created your bash script then what you do is you save it and you've just got to change the permissions on it um, now like I say I borrowed this bit from the Cisco Wi-Fi .sh uh, script in uh, notebooks course materials number four IoT security scripts uh, it's just a way of setting some variables so it's got some nice colors so I'm just going to exit that now when I do an ls minus l when you create that bash script what you'll find is you'll find that it looks like let me just uh, get rid of the execute permissions on it so chmod changes positions uh, permissions I'm going to minus x remove the execute permission from v0 up.sh okay and then we'll do an ls minus l again so on creating with nano that script what you'll find is you'll find it has no execute permission set just like this it just has read write for the owner read for the group and read for everybody else that means you can't run that script it's not possible to run the script because there are no execute permissions set okay so after creating it with nano what you've got to do is you've actually got to set the execute permissions watch what happens if I try to run that if I put forward slash see it actually chose the other script because it knows that v0 up won't run but if I try to force the situation there you go permissions denied so what we're going to do now is we're just going to use chmod to add execute permissions to the vth up script we'll do an ls minus l you see the execute permissions are back on there again so now when I run it actually gives me the option to run it now dot forward slash v0 up before virtual ethernet interface is added in red we've got the loop back in the ethernet clears the screen after virtual ethernet interfaces are added loop back ethernet and v1 with an IP address on okay so that worked we can do an IF config we can see that we've got v1 okay you can make as many of these virtual ethernet interfaces as you like okay what they're actually used for is incredibly clever but it's beyond the scope of the course um, they're used for what are known as network namespaces uh, for things like Linux containers and Docker uh, we can actually create separate TCP IP stacks within the system so your uh, your Linux system can actually have multiple separate isolated T uh, TCP IP networking stacks and you can tie these things together using these virtual Ethernet interfaces that's why they're created in pairs anything that goes in one comes out the other etc okay but we're just going to use them just as a, an interface to hang an IP address on okay so this comes in quite useful in the UPnP lab uh, later on okay now uh, what I'm going to do I'm just going to very quickly show you the other script so nano v0 down dot sh the other scripts are a lot simpler we've got a shebang for uh, hash forward slash bin forward slash bash we're setting air colors up here we've uh, got some text which we're going to print off before the interface is removed I've just swapped the colors around now so it's green and red and all we do now is we do a IP4 IP-4 address show up we delete the interface we sleep five seconds just so you've got time to read it basically clear the screen and then in red after the interface is removed IP-4 address show up and we're ready to go now we would save that and then of course we would need to use chmod to add the execute bit now I already have the execute bit set but it won't do any harm just to show you what, what would actually happen so I would literally do that okay now if we run that script we can see before the interface is removed we have v1 waits five seconds after the interface is removed it goes back to its normal setup with just the loop back and the ethernet and it clears the screen okay 
that's virtual Ethernet interfaces and a little bit of bash scripting and with that we've pretty much now covered all of the fundamental knowledge that you should need in order to successfully have a go at doing the labs now you are level three year three networking students undergraduate degree year three students should be expected to do a little bit of research on their own <laughs> I've tried my hardest to explain it as best as I can for my system my system is not going to be absolutely identical to your system there will be subtle variations nine times out of ten everything I've done on my Windows 10 machine should work on your Windows 10 machine however you might have to do a little bit of research and a little bit of practice and playing around with Linux in order to get it working but it's amazing how much you can learn by doing that so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sign off from the foundational videos and we will create a few lab videos basically sort of as Andrew would put it aha moments things that could perhaps go slightly wrong or uh, could be interesting to try out that type of thing so yeah please join me for those I hope you enjoyed the foundational videos I hope you learned a little bit of Linux in there very powerful operating system uh, skills in Linux administration and Linux networking are very widely sought after um, it's a useful piece of additional knowledge to know and I hope it was interesting so that's Kevin signing off for now and uh, join me again with our lab videos uh, where we'll have a little look at some of the labs that we can do and uh, some of the uh, gotcha moments that might possibly creep in. Thanks very much for watching.